As free agency really starts to ramp up, more and more reports and rumors are surfacing highlighting the Toronto Blue Jays' offseason plans, and a recent report suggests that not only are the Jays interested in Shohei Otani, they are serious players in acquiring the two-way star. So I'm going to break that down in this episode of Jays Digest, as well as Alec Manoa, a report has surfaced suggesting that that relationship might be fractured beyond repair. So stay tuned for what's coming up next. What's up, Jays fans? It's the host of Jays Digest. This is an interesting time of the free agency and the offseason as it's end of November, winter meetings are approaching, and the biggest domino has yet to fall regarding Shohei Otani. And more and more reports are surfacing, highlighting what the Jays may be interested in doing this offseason. So we're going to break all that down. Before we do, a quick reminder to hit that subscribe button. We are so close to 10,000 subscribers, and about 70% of you guys who are watching this video right now are not subscribed. It would mean the world if you just scroll down, see if you're subscribed, and if you aren't, click that button. We make daily Jays content, and 10,000 has been a goal of ours for a while. So thank you guys again for your continued support and let's get into the first topic of the day which is the Blue Jays are serious players for Shohei Otani now a report has suggested this and this is from Scott Mitchell of TSN there's two different reports here that we're going to kind of go over today and the first one obviously regarding around Shohei Otani so we went on a you know TSN article a podcast and I covered a bit of this in yesterday's video and I want to go over the second part here now so wild segment the Jays are serious players for Otani and the fans should not be surprised when they hear it in the near future now an interesting, so as of about an hour and a half ago, a report came out from a bit of a murky source saying that Otani potentially has reached a deal with the Dodgers. So I'm just going to put this up right now. This guy, we don't know how legit he is, but it says breaking the Dodgers and Shohei Otani have agreed in a 10-year, $45 million deal, and he goes on to explain why. The report, We don't know. He's not a reliable reporter whatsoever. He did break, or supposedly broke, Carlos Correa to the Twins news. So who knows how reliable that is, but I did want to preface it with that before I get into this. But what essentially Scott Mitchell says regarding the Jays and Otani, and just a quick note, this has not became official, so who knows? It's probably just, you know, baloney, but I just wanted to throw it out there just in case any of you guys were interested. So regarding this specific segment of the Jays and Shohei Otani, he basically goes on to say that from what he's hearing from his sources, obviously the Jays are going to be pursuing him very, very hard because the front office knows that they need to make a move and they need to make a big splash if they want to contend next season for the World Series. Obviously, we've seen now for the past however many years, this core has failed to even win a playoff game. And I think the Jays and Ross Atkins finally, and ownership and Rodgers, finally realized they need to make a big move if they want to kind of contend for the coming years especially with Vladdy and Boba Shett needing extensions and he basically goes on to say that if Shohei Otani hopefully loves the city that's obviously very very important then Rodgers will be willing to spend a lot of money now if it is in the range of you know 10 years I'm expecting 10 years 500 million dollars plus and if I'm the Rodgers and the Toronto Blue Jays and Shohei Otani shows any inkling in wanting to play for your team you throw him all the money in the world but I just found it very very interesting yeah the Jays are serious players for Otani and the fans should not be surprised when they hear it so who knows if we'll hear that in the near future we do know that Shohei Otani, you know, his camp has told these teams to keep everything private, which is why this Dodgers report seemed a little bit suspicious, but I did want to throw it out there just in case. We'll know if it becomes true over the next coming days. Maybe when you guys are watching this video now, the, the news will be out, but I highly, highly doubt it. I think that you know, the sweepstakes are still underway, but regarding the Toronto Blue Jays and Otani, again, we keep talking about this and I, I don't really want to keep, you know, beating a dead horse here, continually talking about Shohei Otani, but this was a new report from a TSN reporter, a baseball reporter, Scott Mitchell. He has sources and it seems like at the very least, the Jays are going to give their best effort to acquire Shohei Otani. And what that probably means, unfortunately, is that we're going to end up being finalists for the two-way star. But I just wanted to quickly touch on that because not many reports have been out there about Otani. And again, this is basically saying that the Jays are going to be going and giving all of the you know their money to him if he wants it. But this also relates to some other potential players. Like if you, if the Jays and Rodgers are willing to spend big this offseason. So whether that means uh, Yoshinobu Yamamoto, whether that means Cody Bellinger, Jorge Soler, all three, who knows? You know, re-signing Matt Chapman is on the possibility. What we do know and what we've started to gather now regarding our offseason plan is that the Toronto Blue Jays are not afraid to spend. They will give tons of money out as long as they are going to improve their team. And that is something that they are slowly, hopefully, going to do as this offseason progresses. So let me know in the comment section what your thoughts are on not only the Jays with Shohei Otani, but potentially this news of the Dodgers, which wouldn't be too much of a surprise, to be honest, which is why it's kind of believable. If this is a report about the Jays, I wouldn't really believe it. But the Dodgers are probably the number one team to land him. So let me know what your thoughts are on that as we move on now to a bit of a more sad topic here. And this is a brutal Manoa update. Now, in this same podcast he gave a bit of insight and this is something that is kind of new I haven't heard anyone talk about it so obviously we're familiar with the Alec Manoa situation we know he was a phenomenal pitcher in the first two years of his career and then reports came out that executives said they're open to trading Manoa now 
based on this trade scott mitchell had this to say and you can see here manoa trade is a real possibility and if you actually listen to the article i went back or listen to the podcast and the radio show i highly suggest you do he says a very very interesting note he says that the relationship might be fractured between the two teams and that the biggest issue here is obviously the value this is not new information but how valuable he is because the jays will not trade him if his value is not going to provide something back that is very very good this all started way back at the start of the offseason ben nicholson smith's article when he posted an article highlighting potential trade possibilities and kept highlighting alec manoa for dylan carlson and we kind of put on our you know, inspector goggles and speculated that maybe that means that he knows that the Jays are shopping Manoa. And that ended up being the case. Now, not, not Juan Suato, but Alec Manoa. Uh, that was from yesterday's video. But it's interesting now. And here's exactly what he had to say. He said, regarding their relationship in particular, when the Toronto Blue Jays in the wildcard series played the Minnesota Twins last October. So a few months ago, a couple months ago now. It seems a lot longer than that. The Jays flew out every one of their staff, their players who were, you know, maybe didn't make the 40-man roster or were on the 40-man before, just to support the Blue Jays. So all the personnel were there to support the team, but Alec Manoa was one of the only players who was not at Minnesota for that, and that kind of highlights their relationship. Now, whether that means he was, you know, rehabbing, who knows if that's a big deal or not, but he made it seem like a big deal, and if that is indeed the case, it seems like that relationship is a, a lot worse than we may have thought we obviously knew that the relationship was not very good whatsoever, especially with the way how he refused to report to AAA after getting demoted for the second time. And the relationship is absolutely 100% a mess. But when you're looking at a guy like Alec Manoa, they didn't fly him out to Minnesota. Now, do I think the Jays intentionally said, we're not going to fly you out? No, I think Manoa may have declined that. And maybe that left a sour taste in their mouth and that the Jays now want to move on from the star. But from a asset management standpoint you really can't trade Alec Manoa in a time like this unless you're getting a value of when he was a potential Cy Young winner Cy Young candidate to back in 2022 it becomes very very interesting but I wanted to point that out because that is something I've not heard from anyone else regarding the Alec Manoa situation and that's something you'd really only know if you're tuned in in the team and Scott Mitchell obviously has sources among the Blue Jays camp so that's why it's a bit of an interesting note who knows how fractured that relationship is and that's why we keep saying like yeah, it makes no sense for the Jays to trade Manoa. But if that relationship is truly fractured and Manoa does want to move on from the Toronto Blue Jays and get a change of scenery, then the Jays might be handcuffed here and might have to... Obviously, he's under contract, 900000 a year, very, very cheap. But you don't want to have a guy, a toxic guy on your roster of your team who doesn't want to play for your team. And that's why it's a player's league now. And players always demand trades and they usually get it, especially in the NBA and things like that. But it's applicable to the MLB as well and applicable right now uh, when you're talking about an application for Alec Manoa here. So... I don't know, the situation is very, very interesting. I'm a little bit worried that Alec Manoa might end up getting traded this offseason, especially if like something crazy happens with a potential trade because he demands a trade out. That would look horrible in the front office. It would look horrible for the team. But I just wanted to break that down because it is a very interesting report and something I haven't seen, especially in a time now where, let's be honest, everyone, News is very, very dead, specifically because it's all rumors right now. I want the first Toronto Blue Jays to have uh, move to happen as much as you all do. I want them to sign Bellinger. I want them to sign Otani. I want them to do all that. But in the meantime, all we can do is speculate and hope that based on these reports, the Jays will do something. But that'll wrap up the video. Let me know in the comment section below what your thoughts are on that Manoa situation. A very, very interesting report and a bit of a scary one. See you tomorrow. Cheers.